Hello everyone and welcome to The Gaming Grotto, the show all about gaming and the gaming industry and everything else that's related to gaming. Mm. I am here with everyone's favorite metal man, Brad. <laughs> Hello there, I'm Brad Grimm. And Eric the Crusher Sazo. What's up everybody? Uh, well I'll tell you what, Tyler. I have been really busy this weekend. You know yes. why I've been busy? Why have you been busy, Bradley? I have had a little case of the radiation sickness about this new game, Fallout 4. A I've heard about of, that game. Little, little art game, little not, th- nothing too big. A little bit of uh, I've been uranium some, fever. Yeah, I've been hearing a bit of buzz on it from the Reddits, oh, from yeah, the Reddits. Tumblers. It's kind of the biggest game of the year so far, right? Mm. Yes, it is. And that's why today we want to talk about the company behind it. Bethesda. Bethesda Softworks. Man, Bethesda, that's such a cool company. What's Bethesda? It is a company that has been making, most notably, the Elder Scrolls series since the early 90s. And just recently, they've picked up the Fallout series. It's about 10 years ago or so. Recently, as in 2008? (laughs) Aren't they the ones that made Skyrim? Mm, yeah. Yes. They made Skyrim. That's the, mo- the, the latest Scrolls. edition in the Elder Scrolls series. I've played because that. That Elder fun. Scrolls Online does not count because it's bad. <laughs> we don't well, talk about ESO. That's just like your opinion, Tyler. That's like your opinion, man. <laughs> but more specifically, we want to talk about Bethesda's business practices. Now, when Bethesda first started off, they were just kind of an indie company making games based on their favorite D&D games, which would be Elder Scrolls Arena and Daggerfall. Daggerfall was actually a huge financial flop, believe it or not. It al- it almost bankrupted the company. Well, yeah, have you ever played it? It's kind of super just yeah, <laughs> not user-friendly at all. It came with a game-breaking glitch, and the point is that the company was on the verge of bankruptcy before they were bought up by ZeniMax, which was a media conglomerate at the time, or a media corporation. And es- essentially, they gave them the funds that they needed to complete Morrowind, and since then... I've always maybe cynically felt like they've kind of been pulling the strings a bit as far as business decisions go. Well, every single game that they make since Morrowind has been game of the year. Yeah, but then also, like, every game that's been released lately has had, like, more and more content that's, like, chopped off. Well, not, maybe not so much chopped off, but, like, they always plan on adding more stuff and charging you for it. And, I mean... You just can't help but bring up the whole paid mods thing they were trying to do on Steam for, what, like three days before it got cut? <laughs> you know how much your system has to suck for Valve to cut it after three days? I know Greenlight's still a thing. Greenlight is still <laughs> a thing. Like, all these horrible decisions, and they run with them, but paid mods? Oh, no, they're going to cut that immediately. No, but Bethesda's really good with uh, DLC. Like, besides... Besides the horse armor, <laughs> basically. <laughs> One of the more famous ones. Basically everything has been, like, quality, like, at least, like, five hours extra of gameplay, you know? Well, yeah. It's not like they're also doing microtransactions like some other companies. See, but then, like, you gotta wonder, though, are <laughs> yeah. they gonna try and do that for Fallout 4? What? Did, did I say something? Oh, <laughs> no, no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um, I don't think that they're going to do uh, microtransactions for Fallout 4. They haven't so far, unless if they try to bring back paid mods, which I heard might be coming back, but uh, there's the mod community is super mad about it, so I don't think it's going to last. Well, also because paid yeah. mods by themselves, it's such an easily exploitable system because it's so hard to actually prove that a mod belongs to you. And so somebody can just upload a mod from like the other servers like web servers, put it on Steam, sell it for money, and claim that it's their own. I also uh, heard that uh, for really big mods, usually, they require the script extender like program that someone made. That guy's actually going to stop doing it if they uh, keep doing paid mods. So, like, basically any really big mods, like overhaul mods, they're not going to work anymore. So it's going to really affect the modding community. But let's not talk about mods right now. Let's talk about... Just DLC and... Oh, that actually brings me up to another point. What about season passes? That is one thing that you can't deny is a little bit sketchy. It's a little bit sketchy, but I understand it because, honestly, like, the hype for games only lasts a few months. Like, you're more likely to buy a DLC if it comes out in the roughly, like, one month, I heard. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that is it also seems really cheap, so it makes sense for season passes, but... Well, plus, the thing is also, like, a season passes for, for what, like, a year, two years, something like that? 
or is it for all? It's for all the DLC. Anything that yeah. they release. But the problem with it is they keep on raising the prices. I remember like it was introduced like a year ago, and it was only twenty dollars. But now they're selling them for like forty or more. You know. Well, because I mean, it, it's still it's still a little bit of a gamble getting a season pass because sometimes a game won't have a whole lot of DLC, but it'll still sell a season pass. Whereas, like Fallout Four, I'm expecting there's gonna be some decent expansions. They're At probably least not. Two. Maybe yeah. five, because that's what they did for Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, but mm -hmm. for Elder Scrolls, it's always been two. Yeah, that would be kind of worrisome. What if it was like uh, they asked for a, <laughs> they asked for a um, season pass and they just, you know, released like two expansions. But enough about that, because we want to know what you think. And so Eric is going to help read us off some wonderful interviews that we've gotten on this very subject. All right, the first uh, thing we asked the t public was, uh, what do they think about Bethesda? Uh, here's person number one. Person number one. They do all right, but there is a few shady bits out there as far as the way they do their games, the way the contra... They don't manage a whole lot of controversy, so the stuff that does come up is a little bit weird. Uh, person number two. I actually wrote a song about that. Hmm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, person number three. Bethesda yeah, is, is makes the best games on the market in my mind. Um, and the top one would probably be Vegas, but with the add-ons. Well, he doesn't get an A for grammar, but he gets an A-plus for positivity. Or uh, research, because uh, New Vegas is made by Obsidian and develop and published by Bethesda. But it's made on their engine. Yeah, and let's not so nitpick, <laughs> Sorry. please. We could be here all day. <laughs> um, my but, favorite company is Bethesda. That is my favorite. Shut up. Okay, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling me for nitpicking. <laughs> we also asked people about uh, what um, they think about... Hold we on. Uh, we need to talk about the answers. Like... The general opinion of Bethesda is that they're pretty decent, you know? Mm -hmm. But they do do some shady things, apparently. Well, that's the thing is also, do you think they maybe get away with these shady things because of the fact they're seen as, like, a benchmark company? Every <sighs> game they release is always really good, which means they can always get away with shadier things. I think... <laughs> what? <laughs> I think that uh, they get away with it because the games they make, they only come out, like, every, like, five years, you know? Because they only, they're only they a really small team, but they... Uh, and they only work on one project at a time, so it's not like Ubisoft where they release a game every single year, regardless of quality. Like, oh my god. They'll just patch it, Glitches. you know? They'll patch it, it'll be all good. <laughs> oh, it needs to be done. Just release the half done. No. But anyway, <laughs> back to the questions. Back to the answers, rather. Okay. Okay, the second per the second question we asked was, uh, what do they think about DLC and season passes? Uh, person number one. DLC, if done properly, like a, the traditional expansion model, expansion pack model, tends to work fairly well. Doing DLC such as like maybe map packs or just like little bits and bobs within the game, especially within a multiplayer game, divides the community, makes things a lot more difficult. Also, it's a cheap money grab, basically. As far as microtransactions go, um, depends on the game. See, I do agree with that, um, the um, dividing the community part. Like, you play a game like Counter-Strike, and you've got map packs that you have to buy, and so you'll have friends that can play on certain servers that you can't play on, and so you're automatically just dividing people up. Yeah, and it really sucks when you're stuck in a waiting uh, a lobby for, like, an hour just to play a game that's oh, right. gonna last like 10 minutes and it's oh like i made the mistake of getting destiny and that's a whole issue of that most people aren't playing on those maps can yeah. we talk about how one of the first guys we interviewed he responded with a piano oh oh no. yes oh. our wonderful musical friend uh i find his answers to be the most interesting i thought so too it's if very got... poignant and beautiful yeah. yeah i could actually help translate for you if you'd like if you want to yeah, let's replay um, the... Is it gonna, do we got a different answer? Because we asked him multiple yeah, questions. Yeah, let's, let's go with his answer for like what he thinks about DLC. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, not very happy, that one. He Lots of very, very standoffish notes. Yes. Some almost violent notions Indeed. towards uh, DLC. That scares me a little. Yeah. I think I want myself. He's got a lot of very very hateful feelings towards it, I yeah. think. But he does bring up a good point 
about microtransactions and mm-hmm. how uh, they, uh, when done right, they, uh, never mind. When they're done right, no, when they're done right, they can flesh out a game and make it feel like it's more customizable. Like, if you buy a car, you'd like to be able to buy new things for that car. It's just, mm-hmm. when do you, when are you charging too much for something superficial? Yeah, um, but the thing about microtransactions is they're a free-to-play model, but they're introducing them into $60 games. Mm-hmm. $60 is a lot to pay for just a game, and then to put more on top of it for things that aren't even, like, substantial, that you can't even touch. Like, usually they're in-game content, like... A different well, especially because a lot of the times, even microtransactions will be to, like, skip a certain challenge within a game. And at that point, it's like, well, why are you even playing the game if you're just <laughs> going to skip past the challenge that you're supposed to complete in the game? Or you... easy fatalities in Mortal Kombat. Was yeah, garbage. do you just want to walk into a room and immediately have everyone cheer for you? Like, yay! <laughs> you paid the game! You win! <laughs> you you started the game! You're a winner in everyone's if eyes. If you ever played DLC Quest, it illustrates that perfectly. <laughs> it's like $2 on Steam. There's two more interviews from uh, we did for that question. If uh, we should, play. yeah, we should. Play. Yeah. Um, for the DLC. Yeah, for the DLC. Uh, that would be a lot of money, but I mean, I'd still play them. You just don't. It's just you choose not to buy them. I mean, usually it's just for extra shit you don't need, actually. So. Question number three. Uh, what was it? Uh, what do they think about uh, games being the same price regardless of genre or length? Hmm. Uh, here's what one guy had to say. Well, for a game like the says that it doesn't make sense. But for a game like Call of Duty Battlefield, then yeah, I'd probably drop money for that. But for says that it doesn't have online capability, so it makes no sense. <laughs> I don't think that guy has ever played a video game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, seriously though, I'm I'm looking forward to Call of Duty Battlefield. What's Bresesda? Dude, Bresesda is I seriously think- like like they make Call of Duty Battlefield and but it's just Pokemon. Bethesda has a game. And what game is Bethesda? What's it like? What's the dude? I think it's style? like the Pokemans. I think. I think like you run around. Is it for the Wii Station 360? Let, let's on. go on to the next question. I don't this, waste guy, all day. this guy's interesting. There's another question. Another answer from the piano dude. So let's listen to that. Ah yes. I think honestly what he's saying there with his positive attitude sort of is that game makers should really be able to just choose and scale their games based like, on how they feel it's worth it's and like especially community and I think even in the AAA industry it's like most of the time the reason a game is $60 is because communists <laughs> other than the dirty reds <laughs> we uh but it's because they get this team of like hundreds of people to work on one game and you compile all the employees wages together you got a lot of money whereas you know indie de- indie devs have the ability to charge less because it's usually a team of like between 1 and 10 people but the thing is even if indie games are shorter they usually feel more worth it yeah because, there's a lot. uh they're only $15 it's not like you're investing half a week's paycheck you know if you're working uh-huh. like part time and so with the like, advent of Steam sales, with every, like, 300 things being on sale at any one time. Yeah, it's like $2 for a game, so. Yeah, I'm pick, I picked up, like, Fallout New Vegas for, like, I think $3, $4. Okay, we're not talking about Steam, though. We're talking about, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about but Valve for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> but this episode's on Bethesda. Yeah. It's Bethesda. So, but, like, I, I mean, I get it with Bethesda, with, uh, with Fallout 4. I've already put, like, you know, like, more than 100 hours, I think. They well, put probably a lot of much. effort into that game. I, into I, I gotta give them that. And if uh, you take the like minimum wage, it's like <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty much pretty worth it. <laughs> We're probably gonna lose a lot of followers for me saying this, but I haven't played the game yet. Oh, it's fine. Like, I whatever. <laughs> what followers? Hate me all you want. Hate me all you <laughs> oh want. Oh my god, you haven't played Fallout. Oh. I'm like, okay. Um, but but like the order 1886. I like when they were advertising that, you know. Well, that's the advertisement for uh, game. That is that it's is a story of thirty dollar game. But that game was freaking sixty dollars for two hours of gameplay. It's Dude, like, imagine my surprise when I got fucking Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes, and it was thirty dollars for a demo. Yeah, essentially. It's like you got one mission, and that's it. That's all you got. You can do different objectives on it, but that's it. 
That's why but you, that's uh, Konami, and that's for another episode. That's that's why you should read a review before you yeah. buy a game. But then again, that puts never mind. That's a different episode. We're not going to talk about games <laughs> journalism right now. We're trying to talk right about now. video games and Bethesda. Okay. Anyways, that's going to looks like uh, wrapping up towards the end of our episode. Okay. So, uh, uh, looking forward to Doom next year. Especially looking forward to it. Another um, good Bethesda title. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, Fallout 5. When is that coming out? Like <laughs> Probably like 2022. <laughs> I'm personally yeah, looking for the new DLC for Goat Simulator, but that's just me. Mm, yes, of course. Have you, yeah. played, have you played the RPG mod? Of course I have. Of course you have. It came out on my birthday, so yeah, of course I had to play it. That is like one of the few PC games that I see in physical copies on store shelves still. Yeah. Really? That and, well, Fallout, really. I got a Diablo. physical copy of Axiom Verge. Oh, you got Super Indie cool. Box? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Dude, yeah, Indie Box is so freaking hour. worth it. All right, we got to wrap this up because we could ramble for another hour. This has been the Gaming Grotto. I'm Brad Grimm. I'm uh, Tyler. And I'm Eric Sanzo. Eric the Crusher Sanzo. And we Eric will see Sanzo. you next time. Probably not because I think we're getting canceled after this episode. I don't know. Sorry. Bye. We're getting sued. <laughs>